Oh, I'm late. I'm late. I'm sorry. I'm late, but just hold on. I'll give you an update as soon as possible. Okay. What's up, guys? Welcome back to HMHT. My name is Ben, your host, of course, and you probably excited as I am as today is the first day of WWDC 2021, where we get a bunch of new software updates, including iOS 15. I'm basically going to be showing you how you can install and download iOS 15 on your personal or backup device if you are willing to. This is the first developer beta and I'll be sharing it with you and taking you through the update. Before we get started, I do wanna let you know that here on Half Men Half Tech, I cover a whole lot of Apple update videos ranging from watchOS 8, macOS 12, iOS 15 and beyond. So if that's something that tickles your pico, then a sub to the channel will be good. There's also a couple of stuff that you might want to take note of before updating to iOS 15 in order to make this update as safe and also as smooth of a transition as possible. The first thing that I wanna let you know or put out there is that before updating to iOS 15, since this is the first developer beta, it's going to have a ton of issues and bugs that are going to come up. So first thing that you want to make sure you do on your device before installing this is make a backup of your device. You can use this by doing an iCloud backup. Simply go into your uh, settings and then click on your iCloud and there you'll be able to go to uh, iCloud and once you reach on iCloud, you can see iCloud backup and you can create a backup right now by clicking where it says backup or if you have a MacBook like I have here, you can always connect your device via a USB cable. I have one right here so you can do that, connect it to your Mac and have a backup on your device or if you want to use a third party source like iAmazing, you can always do that. But first things first, you always need to protect your device and your data by backing up your device. I do not recommend you update your device to a first developer beta update if you are not willing to reset your device or restore your defaults at any time of this update. Just in case anything is to happen during or after the update and you need to restore your information or device, having that backup always comes in handy. So. That's the first thing. And also the other thing that you want to do before installing iOS 15 is remove any other beta profiles that you might have on your iPhone, be it public beta or developer beta. So being able to remove them is pretty easy. What you want to do is go into your settings and then you want to go to general and scroll down to where it says profiles. So you see the profile that you have and if you click on the profile, you see an option to remove the profile. So you want to go ahead and click remove profile and then input your passcode and remove that old profile that you don't need. Since we're going to be installing an iOS 15 developer beta one profile, we are trying to minimize risk and also make this update to iOS 15 as smooth as possible. Once you are done removing everything, you can go ahead and restart your device to make sure that the changes you have input in your device by removing the profile take full effect. I recommend you always restart your device after removing or installing a profile. Now, the last and final thing that you want to keep in mind or beware of is if you have a phone that keeps charge, at least try to keep above 80% of charge before installing the update. But what's even better than that is to make sure that your device is connected to a power source during the update or the installation process. Since this is a new uh, first beta of an iOS 15, it's going to take quite some time. So it's better to be safe than sorry. And the best thing that you can do is make sure that your device is connected to a power source during the update. If your device is to somehow run out of juice or shut down during the installation process, you run a very, very, very big chance that your device might be bricked and you will not be able to restart your device 
or recover the information that was on your device if you had not created a backup. So it's very important that you make sure that your device has a good battery or is connected to a power source, which is even better. So finally, with those suggestions out of the way, there's two ways that you can install iOS 15 on your device. The first one is through an IPSW file, and the second one is through a developer beta profile. We've seen Apple use both of these methods in the past. I believe with iOS 13, Apple used an IPSW file where you need to download the IPSW file that is for your device. If you have an iPhone like 8, you need to download the file for the iPhone 8. And what's like a big disadvantage of using the method where you need an IPSW file is that you need to have a PC or a MacBook close by. And then once you download the IPSW file, you can then initiate the update by connecting your device to your MacBook. So you need a PC, otherwise you will not be able to update if Apple just releases the IPSW file method. However, the easiest and most common method is through an over the air update using a developer beta profile, which is the method that we are going to be using in this video. 